Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, pastor. Father John Broby, associate pastor. We offer this Mass for diseased Kendrick family members. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, let us in a moment of silence call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing Paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature who lives and reigns within it of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called synagogue of freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia, came forward and debated with Stephen but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders, the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified. This man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus, the Nazarene, will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Blessed are though they blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princesses meet and talk against me, your servant meditates mediates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are those who follow the law. Remove me from the way of falsehood, and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, They themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. 
And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. For the purposes of our study of John chapter 6, the Bread of Life Discourse, I'll ask our deacon to read tomorrow's Gospel reading. We want to have the entire pericope. To have the entire pericope, you need to read from verse 22 to verse 35. Unfortunately, St. Mark will not be happy with me for saying unfortunately. Tomorrow is the feast of St. Mark, the evangelist. And so tomorrow at Mass, we will celebrate the feast proper. And so we will miss this reading. That we can have the full piece, I would like the deacon to read tomorrow's gospel reading so we can put the two together. That is the entire pericope. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in him? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. So my dearly beloved Verse 1 to 15 is the sign which we read on Friday. And at the background of that text is the feast of Passover and unleavened bread from Exodus chapter 12. Now, between today's text and Friday's text is the middle of verse 16 to 21. Jesus walking on the Sea of Galilee. We know that story too well. Now, that is the middle. And then from verse 22 to 35, what is at the background of this entire pericope is Exodus chapter 16. The first time food is mentioned in the book of Exodus. Now, that is the giving of manna to the people of Israel when they left Egypt and started their surgeon in the wilderness. Now, my dearly beloved, Jesus is now in Capernaum, and the people followed him, and they are asking, Lord, where have you been? We have been looking for you. And Jesus says to them, you are not looking for me because you you saw signs, but because you ate and, and and were full. Do not look for food that perishes, but look for food that endures into eternal life. And then they come back. What is is that kind of food you're talking about? What is that kind of food you're talking about? Now, Jesus is moving them from the sign of the multiplication of bread to the ultimate destiny, the ultimate destination, which is the bread of life, the Holy Eucharist. Then there is the use of the verb didomi. It is used in the perfect sense And it is also used in the present continuous. Now that is the class of the reading. When it is used in the perfect sense, 
It refers to the manna that the people of Israel ate while they were in the desert. And it says, it is not Moses who gave you the bread, the manna. It is my father who gave you the manna. Now, this is a perfect sense, a perfect tense. It is something that is given in the past, completely done, but the effect still lingers on. And so what the Jews are doing is that they are still holding on to that which was done in the past, ended, but the effect still lingers on. And they are still holding on to it. They will not let go of it. Now, Jesus will use that same verb, didome, in its present continuous. It is not Moses who gave you. It is my father who gave you. But now, I, I gave, gives you, given you, something that is present but still continuing, not ended. And so Jesus is the one who gives us the bread of life. His generosity has not come to an end. His generosity will continue into eternity. And that is why it is the bread of life. That which leads into eternal life. My dearly beloved, that is the Holy Eucharist. That is the bread of life right there. And so Jesus is inviting all of us to that table which endures into eternal life which leads all of us into eternal life. You have to make a choice. It is either you cling, you hold on to that which ended in the past but has effects in the present, or you hold on to the one who continuously gives you the bread of life, his very son. Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. Come down from heaven. Connect that to the readings of yesterday. Luke chapter 24. When Jesus met the two guys, he took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them. A Eucharistic action. All of us, my dearly beloved, like Clopas and his unnamed friend. That unnamed friend is me. That unnamed friend is you. I invited to that table, which will, only, which will always open our eyes to the great things of God. Shall we rise and trust in Jesus, the bread of life, present our petitions to the Father. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may God continue to increase their faith and lead them in fruitful ministries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, may God move their hearts and lead them in serving with humility and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hunger, may God fill, fulfill their needs with nutrition for their bodies and spiritual food that leads to salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may Christ be our guide in witnessing to his saving power with grace and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the deceased Kendrick family members, and for all who have died in Christ, may he grant them eternal life and rich fellowship with the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all those prayers that are in the depths of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. For all our family members, all our friends, who have left the faith, who have left the church, and all those experiencing faith crisis, that Jesus, the bread of life himself, will locate them 
and bring them back to the Father's unconditional love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceased to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of church, to the Francis, our Pope, and William Johnson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, all the diseased Kendrick family members whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleaded throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in need of the Holy Spirit, all glory and is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter heaven, but only say the word my soul shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.